there are so many good things that God wants to grow in you. He wants to grow in you gifts of patience, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. I think we all want some more of that. But the thing is this, when you look at your life, you might look at certain areas and ask the question, well, if God wants to grow this in me, why don't I see more of it? If you're a Christian, maybe this is something you've been wrestling with for a while. You want God to show up. You want him to change you, but you don't see it happening. Or if you're not a Christian, maybe this is the reason why. You have some questions about how God works in you and why he isn't changing you more than he is. Well, the good news is that Jesus actually predicted this would happen. One day he was telling a parable or a story that gives us a supernatural view of what's going on when God wants to change you, when he wants to grow you, but nothing is actually happening. So this is a story that he told, a parable he told. It's in Matthew chapter 13. It goes like this. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And it's in this parable that Jesus gives us a, a picture, a view of what's going on when God wants to grow something in you, but something is preventing it. And thankfully, Jesus goes on in the next section to break down those different types of soil, those different types of, of ground, and, and share with us what they mean and what they mean for you. But before we dig into that, what I want to do is plant in you a truth, an idea that I pray gives you hope throughout this series. You see, when Jesus told this parable about the farmer sowing seed, he didn't tell this to, to give you a bunch of guilt or shame over how you haven't grown in the past. The reason he told this parable is because he wants to give you hope for today and the future. What you're going to see in this parable is you are forgiven. Whatever led to this point, whatever growth failed to happen, maybe it was your fault, maybe it was a situation around you, Jesus knows. And he gives you this parable to give you hope and direction for the future. So my question for you is this. What if God has planted something in your life, in your heart, that he wants to grow right now? In Matthew chapter 13, he said, The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Jesus points to two things that can get in the way, that can choke out the good things that God wants to grow. And these things might seem unrelated at first, but they're actually quite similar. Uh, the first thing he points to is this concept that uh, there's worries of life that can choke out the good things that God wants to do. Now, I don't want to minimize the things you worry about, but at some point, you have to minimize the value of worrying. It does not change anything. It does not add anything. It can't take anything away. All it does, all worry does, is it drains your time, your energy, your sleep. And it's not something that any of us want. So if you've had some worry, here's what I want you to know. That worry has been driving you to seek help inwardly. Seek help from yourself. And that can minimize the help that God wants to do and what he wants to grow in you. And the other thing that Jesus points to, which seems like something completely different, but actually is very similar, he points to the, to the deceitfulness of wealth. Um, the deceitfulness of wealth is this, that if you have enough wealth, you won't have to worry. You won't have to seek anyone's help. You'll be fine. Now, can wealth make you happy? Yeah, it can make you happy, but only for a short amount of time. It's like this sugar high kind of happiness that leaves you worse than before. The deceitfulness of wealth is that you need more and more and more and more, and it never gives you what it promises. The deceitfulness of wealth is dangerous because it, seeks, it, it leads you to seek help from no place. And the reason why it's so dangerous, this deceitfulness of wealth, is because it leaves you in a place where you don't think you need anyone else's help. So the remedy is this. When it comes to your garden, the things that God wants to grow in you and sow in you, here's what we need to do. Number one, get out your gloves, get on your knees, and start weeding. It's time to look at that worry and say, worry, 
it's time that we had a talk. Worry, it's been fun having you in my life, but it's time to replace you with something better. And you get on your knees and you pray to God, God, the things I'm worrying about, I have no control over. The weight of my future is too much for me to carry. God, would you remove this worry and replace it with a promise? And you turn to the, the wealth that you've been turning to for hope and help and confidence, and you say to that wealth, it's been fun, but it's time for you to leave. It's time for you to, to be removed from my life. God, would you give me the strength and the hope and the faith to take this God out of my life and replace it with your promises? Now, here's what I know. You can't go through your entire garden in one day and weed the whole thing. But what if today you put on your gloves, you got on your knees, and you humbled yourself before God to let him determine what gets to stay and what gets to go? And then you take that first step and you say, God, would you give me the faith the trust, the strength to remove what does not belong so that what you want to grow can thrive. Here's how Jesus concludes it. He says, But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And if you're thinking to yourself, that's a pretty big harvest for one seed, you're right. The point is this, not only would a, would a harvest of 100 be ridiculous, that kind of a harvest is miraculous. And here's what this means for you. When God sows in you something that he wants to develop, it's not just that he's cutting off the rough edges or bringing you up a couple of levels. He's actually doing something miraculous in you. When he wants to plant in you this gift of patience, it's not just that he bumps up your patience by a few levels. He plants an entirely new version of you, one whose patience is fed by and reflects the patience that God demonstrated to you in Christ. When God wants to give you the gift of peace and grow it in you, he doesn't just increase your peace by a few levels. He grows a new version of you, throwing out the old you and growing a new version of you whose peace is a reflection of the peace that God has with you in Christ. This is not just a ridiculous number that Jesus throws out, it's a miraculous number because that's what God is doing in you. Now, I would be doing a huge disservice to this parable if I didn't mention one final thing, and that's simply this. When it comes to the harvest that God wants to grow in you, it's not just for you. You see, when you look at what Jesus did as, as he taught this parable, he wasn't just looking for gardens to grow because if he was looking for the perfect garden, he already had it. He already had the fullness of all these good things that God wants for you. He didn't have to mess with your dirt or my dirt. But the reason why he's doing this is because he was establishing a kingdom of people. When he intercepted, when he got between the punishment that was supposed to be between you and me and God, Jesus stepped in, and when he did that, he created a kingdom of people, a gathering of people, each with their own different things to work through, absolutely, but each uniquely positioned to demonstrate what, it, what, what can happen when God grows in me and in you. So my question as we end this series is simply this, what's an area of your life where you've been wanting to grow, but you haven't been able to? As you look through these things, what I pray is that God would give you the miracle harvest, but that more than that, as he develops and grows these gifts within you, that you would see that there's so much more than just about you. What if the seed that he's causing to grow becomes the seed for somebody else? I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things at a higher, things at a nobler, these have allured my sight. And I will hasten to him, hasten so glad I'm free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to. Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he had the words of life. And I will hasten to him, hasten so glad I'm free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to So that I may gain Christ. Shed
sharing this suffering, sharing is raising, granted a brand new life. And I will hasten to him, hasten so glad I'm free. Jesus, great.